Got it, it's alright. Got it. Sure. Hold him, walk, yeah. Keep holding, keep holding. Move your legs, move your legs about. Move your legs about. See that guy right there? Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Well, we need to go back. Not this far back. At least not yet. So we know tomorrow you'll be running a half marathon, but half fire you man. Half fire. <laughs> <laughs> half marathon. <laughs> take, take two. <laughs> On the 30th of June, 2022, Stephen Green set out to complete a half Ironman as part of his training. I just know it's a formality. I go out there tomorrow and I'll be able to do it. A part of his training for what, you might ask? I've seen the Guinness World Record. It's the longest unrested triathlon. It's held by a man named Ian Lambert and it stands at 220 miles. I was convinced I could beat it. Breaking that world record. Legend. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. Breaking that world record. 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 But something wasn't right. Done. Half Ironman. Uh, 1.4 mile swim because I swam too far. 56 on the bike. And then a half marathon. Depending on what happened from the back of this, the big event was going to be my last one anyway. Stephen had previously broken the world record for the double Ironman in 2020 and he'd announced publicly that his next world record was going to be this one, the triathlon. But desire was waning. I was already losing a bit of motivation, if I'm honest, prior to it, the training, the injuries. It was hard because the, uh, I wasn't a big enough why to do it. And uh, why I'm going around, I'm just questioning. That was just horrible. What, what I've just done there was fucking horrible in terms of I was just doing something for six and a bit hours that I just had no enjoyment doing at all. I started to look at my age and stuff like that and just thought, put my focus on my businesses again. I feel uh, fine with my decision. There's no sort of um, uh, feeling upset or anything like that. And I just thought to myself, I've got nothing to prove. I know I'm capable of beating the world record. Um, it doesn't matter what other people think. I'm all right going out on a, a half Ironman distance. And then uh, I did a live video and pretty much said, that's me, I'm, uh, I'm done. It feels right and uh, that's why I'm following it. So there we have it. Enjoy your day. He goes out on a half Ironman. Keep pushing guys, uh, you're capable of more. And then later that night, Gemma, my partner, called me out and um, she said a few things which uh, struck a chord. It was, it was... I called him a pussy to start. It was not so much calling me out could I do it, because I knew I could do it. The catalyst to reigniting the flame was obviously Gemma giving him a bit of a prod, saying, you've told everybody you're going to do this and now you're bowing out and that contradicts everything you talk about. You said you were bored of the route, you said that it was grinding you down a bit. Um, aren't you the guy that teaches people how to reframe things? Uh, and I thought on it and I thought, yeah, she's calling me out and she had a fair point. Oh, you don't want to do it. Purely that's a mindset thing. Come on. You're the legend at mindset. You're better than that. So stop being a pussy. <laughs> As soon as it was that kind of decision of, I'm doing it, full steam ahead, like, on it. Like, quite intense. I brought it right forward. My coach wasn't happy with it because of the limited amount of time I had to train for it, especially coming off the back of an injury. The way you would prepare with anyone would be a lot more deliberate, structured, progressive. Steve doesn't really work like that. He's like, belt and braces, he's all in, he just goes for it. Um, so he's quite difficult to manage because you just I, I want to do this, I'm going to do this now 
Um, so the hardest part or the most technical part of all what he's doing isn't the training that he's doing, it's about managing his training so that he doesn't do too much. I had around about four weeks from to get from that uh, level of conditioning up to world record level. So it was quite intense because it's not just the 25 hours of training, it's the, the eating, the preparation, the stretching, the ice baths, the traveling to the to the open water, swimming and stuff like that. And training in 40 degree heat. It's pretty much a full-time thing, so it, it can be pretty draining. How do you really, really truthfully feel right on it? Yeah, no, nah, like, Glenn's just been saying there that, um, like, <laughs> laughing about, like, fucking just how relaxed, like, as if I'm not doing it at all, like. That's the best way to be, though, isn't it? I was putting myself in a certain state, but I didn't want to hype myself up. I didn't want to burn off any negative energy or anything like that. All as I was thinking in my exit was a Friday night, I was thinking, fuck, I've been doing this training for four months. And all I want to do is just fucking chill this weekend, get a Chinese or something. Well, Will said it today. He said it'll be when you get a mile four and it's, you start to really feel it and then knowing you've still got another fucking three mile to go. I don't know why I always thought, like, think that'll be the bit that you're just not asked about the swim. But that you're like saying, no, that's, that's going to be fucking brutal. Yeah, it's going to be, I know it's going to be cheap. Stephen has never swam more than 3.1 miles before in his life. And in the morning, he has to kick off his world record attempt with a seven mile swim. I know it's going to be cheap. I was aware that it was going to be challenging. I was aware that there was a high chance uh, my shoulder could flare up, but it was too far. I'm too far in by that point. It was getting done in my, my head, and I do believe the body will follow when the mind's that strong. I know it's going to be cheap. The other day when I was at 3.1 mile, I was feeling it. Where shoulders? Yeah. Shoulders back. <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. Mental. But who is Stephen Green? As a child, I was ill a lot. Uh, I was in hospital quite a few times. I uh, couldn't keep food down. I was pretty sick. Um, I was a late developer, so while I was at school, I was the second smallest in the whole year. I was the smallest guy, second smallest, even including all the, the females. Uh, I was five foot three, um, but I always had a, a level of determination about me, especially with me um, not being uh, too bright at school as well. Um, just the whole school thing for me was, was not a good experience, so I kind of had this attitude. I wanted to prove people wrong. Many, many years of training as a, a high level as a kid, and then uh, in the army being a physical training instructor, uh, passing P Company, getting the maroon berry. Um, I, I just know what I'm capable of doing when I, I engage, so um, it's just about staying relaxed in those moments. But why? What's the reason for doing these extreme challenges? I want to show people what they're capable of. I believe we're all capable of impressive results. The amount of unlimited potential inside every yeah. single one of you. Every single one of you, far more capable than you even understand. I believe we're capable of a lot more. And I'll continue to do things. And I'll keep doing shit like that until, until people start to grasp it. The day began with an interesting revelation. We'd reached out to the previous record holder, Ian Lambert, and invited him down to attend the event, presuming he'd be here towards the end. But at 5am, Stephen found out he was coming a little bit earlier than we'd expected. When I was on the bus, I was told he was coming on the swim. Um, I asked the question why I was told that he was coming at the end of the day. Um, there was probably an element of um, did he want to make a point? Why was he uh, attempting to do the full swim with me? Uh, I knew he was strong at swimming. It's probably not my um, strongest event. Um, and I just thought, I'm not, uh, if he's there to help me, great. If he's there to uh, prove a point, um, emotionally, I'm not going to get sucked into that. I'm here to do, do my own thing. How, how is that going to be? Like, is it? 
because we, like, we didn't know the guy, like, is, he, is it going to be beneficial to, the, to it or is it going to do the opposite? I know that I've got to go into that hellhole, which I now call the, the beyond, um, which is the place where you're mentally and physically broken and you think you've got nothing else left. Uh, and I just think it's the way of your body trying to protect you. You've actually got loads more left. Um, but it's not as easy as just continuing, like, that mechanism your body has to get through the other side of that. Um, you've got to be savage. Is there any last things you want to say before you go somewhere nobody else has gone before? Follow your dreams, dare to be brave, never be scared of film. Atmosphere quite often sets the tone. There was a positive vibe around, everybody was positive, so I felt quite comfortable and confident. Uh, the weather was nice, the environment was nice. He turned up and looked really relaxed and comfortable. This is in there. Stephen was to swim the seven miles in a loop of three marked boys. He got in the water at 6am and began the event ten minutes later. As soon as he set off swimming, I was like, it was happening. So I felt really relaxed about it. That changed throughout the day, but I'm sure we'll cover that in a bit. He was swimming with Ian, the previous world record holder, and also someone that I coach. We brought Ian in to support. And we met on the morning briefly before I was to go in the water. There was a bit of apprehension that there may be a little bit of underlying competitiveness between them. But that absolutely didn't happen and what really worked well was they worked together in sort of pacing it right. After swimming for uh, probably an hour or two, I got really comfortable with following him and um, uh, you, you probably start to feel that bond that this guy wants to help me. Ian had the experience of doing something like very similar previously um, and what that did is when other swimmers got in the water it stopped them getting uh, too giddy and swimming too fast. Although I was doing my own thing I started to feed off the fact that he was we were both sharing food and stuff like that together um, and then I was really pleased that he stayed on the swim and, and seen the whole lot out with me. So I never went down to help with any intention of competing or trying to sabotage anything, anything like that. My intention was always just to offer some support. And I was buzzing about it for a couple of different reasons. I actually watched Steve's Double Iron Man documentary on YouTube um, a while ago. And that was actually the thing that inspired me to push myself a bit further see what I'm capable of and that's why I actually came up with the idea of this triathlon from. I, uh, I posted in a, in a group that I'm in if anybody knew any coaches who could sort of help me with the, the challenge that I had in mind and the sort of mutual, somebody that me and, me and Stephen both knew um, sort of commented and said try these guys out, uh, Ronnie Parker from Intricate Training uh, he helped Steve Green do his double Ironman, and I thought, well, it'd be amazing. That's what, uh, if, if they helped Steve Green do that double Ironman, which was the documentary that I watched, then surely it can help me do my idea, which was the, the triathlon. No. no. While he's in the water, though, he'll just, because he's in a horizontal position, you need to take on whatever he's feeling comfortable about rather than trying to get specific aims in. So Otherwise he'll, he'll, he'll be sick and you don't want that in the water. So am I better trying to put another scoop in for Targo later in one of them? No, it'll be alright, honestly. When he gets on the bike, 
but before he gets in the bite, in his transition, he absolutely has to eat. And then every half an hour after that, he needs to be eating. Preferably something solid, not just like yeah. liquid based. Yeah. Um, but while he's in the water, we just don't want him being sick or not himself ill, so he's all right. Before the event, I was a bit nervous. So I was a bit nervous for a couple of reasons. I, I didn't know how sort of welcomed I would be. I um, didn't know how Steve would be with us. As it happens, everybody was amazing, Steve and his team. Um, and I was also nervous for, I was nervous for Steve, I think, because I knew, I knew the size of the sort of challenge that he had ahead of him. I knew, I knew how hard it was going to be. And whether it was just to offer a little bit of company or, you know, carry some food and water. Or if I thought it was pushing the pace too fast, and be slowing down a little bit. It worked really well, so the swim couldn't have went better, in my opinion. They're like, I don't um, on a serious note, right? The back of my van, the tailgate lifts up. Yeah. And there's a cooker in the back of there. Yeah. And Bacon in, sound, in, is that? In, in the back there, there's a fridge. So, pull some stuff out, light the gas, and when he gets out for his transition, he said every man loves a good sausage in them, so. <laughs> His words. Yeah. Keep that off YouTube. I was probably all right until about five mile point. I um, started to feel it a little bit. Come the six mile point, I started to feel a bit tired. Um, and the last mile was um, my shoulders, the back of my neck. I uh, was starting to feel it too. My back, I was starting to cramp up a little bit. Just being in that, that same position for, for five hours. Uh, so I was glad to get out the water at that five hours ten, I think it was. Oh, There's a red light at the front. Oh, okay, so you um, I can tell you. Everything needed to be ready for Stephen getting out the water. As the strictest rule from Guinness states, Stephen can't stop for more than five minutes. Is that okay? Right, that's in, I think. The camera's recording. <laughs> Just so you know. But I'll follow you. Well done. Yes, I'm Time that well, didn't I? You Made the job of editing this easy, didn't it? Look at that. Four angle setup for him walking to the van. With the Guinness, they have very strict rules on um, what you can use, what equipment you use, uh, what your route's like. The actual percentages of the, the swim, bike and run have to be in a very specific percentage. Uh, and then the five minute uh, rule of resting um, was really difficult. So to come out of the swim, you only have five minutes to get your wetsuit off, all your kit off, me, try and dry down, um, eat some food, get in your cycling kit and on your bike all within five minutes, otherwise it's an instant fail. Yeah, got it. I was relaxed, so even though the, the team were probably a bit more uh, panicky than myself, because they were kind of calling out three and a half minutes, four minutes, four minutes, 15. Um, and uh, I, I just stayed in my own zone, I, I knew I could make the time, but it, it does add pressure, definitely. Over the bus, yeah, over the bike. Right. Yeah. Go on, Steve. Go on. One. Go on. Come on! The bike ride began with a 35 mile trip back to Redcar, Stephen's hometown. This involved cycling some busy roads and dual carriageways.
You just keep riding, Steve. Let me worry about the cars. Once in Redcar, there was a predetermined loop for Stephen to follow, which came out to just under 10 miles, and he had to complete this loop around 16 times. It was going to take him approximately 13 hours to do, but it's all right though because out of the three, run, swim, and bike, which is your favourite? Bike. But the cycling was probably the least favourite for the support team, since it was the hardest to document. A part of the submission for the Guinness record is a full 30 hour recording of the entire event so that they can see that the 5 minute rule is adhered to. This meant always having the camera on Stephen, literally at all times. This is where teamwork came into play massively, making sure that there was always someone following Stephen with the camera either Spud on the bike or Glenn and David in the support vans. Yeah, we literally had to buy so many dash cams for this. I thought I was in the van. There's water there, do you want to get some water? I don't want to think too much about what I'm doing because it's over 30 hours. Um, if you start to think about what you're doing when you're swimming for seven mile or hundreds of thousands of revolutions and steps, it's going to grind you down. So it's important that you can um, try and distract the mind. He's not, he's not renowned for being super fast, he's not renowned for being super powerful, he's not a climber, he's not a speedy, but he's just consistent. So he'll just get on, go and get to where he needs to get, which is, is a, a skill um, and a positive attribute in itself. My only thing I felt for me but, uh, was that was the fueling part of it. And I kept, has he had enough? He hasn't had this. And I was trying to calorie count and make sure he was getting what he needed like every hour, which was 350 calories on average. And it was coming back like he's had half a banana, and I was like, oh my god, that's nowhere near enough of what he needs. Like a naughty child, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think it was more stressful for me. <laughs> there was a time where we were a little bit worried that he was working too hard. That's two minutes, you bad lads. So you need to start ignoring your heart, right? Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get really tired your body's going to guard itself. So if you tried to work really hard now, you wouldn't be able to get your heart rate up to 155, 170, because your body will go, no, I'm tired. So you need to go and feel now. Yeah. And if you're telling me you feel good, if, if I believe you, but from outside looking in, yeah, you look tired. You, you, you posture your head down. That's why I shouted you at the side of the road. 30. I just shouted Steve to see how alive you were, because you look tired. Two minutes so there, I, would, I would like it. Back it off a bit. Yeah. Find a place that you feel good and then knock it off a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But actually, he, he knew in himself he was fine. A lot of people, including my coach and my dad, felt I was pushing it too hard on the bike, but I wasn't. I was, I was very comfortable. Um, I was actually asking the question at 120, 130, why am I not feeling anything? I, I, I felt like really strong. He's telling himself he got to 150 miles and he was like, I didn't realise I'd got to 150 miles, which was quite pleasing. I put him on the vehicle, yeah. I remember at one point he was just ahead of all of his times, like smashing it. And, and there were certain points I was like, just stop, like just stop, like like trying to throw in like food into the the van as it was moving because he just wasn't stopping and trying to refuel him as he went 
uh, I think he was perfectly fine with it and I think it was more the logistics for the team. All the way up to 150, um, I felt strong. And then it, uh, at sort of 10, 11 o'clock at night, it started to get dark um, and it started to hit me quite quickly. The last 30 miles on the bike, um, I did start feeling the last half an hour was, was really dragging out. The, the last sort of five miles just uh, seemed to take forever. If we take a look at Stephen's stats, his average heart rate throughout the bike was 142 beats per minute. But for the last two hours, his heart rate shot up to a dangerous 180. His body was beginning to kick back now. And that, I believe, is the cycling over. Out for the uh, out for the run. Good man. Forty-six mile run. Obscene. Sixty-three of his still on line there. Why, why not good? Yeah, yes, you sound all over this. Are you, are you injured? Good. No. no, I sound. Have you, have you got food in your body? These are a bit soft. Have you got food in your body? Or some food, yeah. Right. Go! Go! Ignore any heart rate yeah. on his left watch. Okay. So, other than feeling a bit tired, you have no reason to not be good. <sighs> so, you're good. Alright, let's get out the door. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Still not you know it's gonna pass though. You've been here before. It's charging mate. Yeah. At points where I start to feel the pain. Um, at them points, I'll have them words with myself of, okay, it's starting to um, bite down a little bit. This is where we need to uh, get serious. This is where we need to um, focus on what we're doing. And sometimes it's just chunking it down. So uh, certainly on the, the run, I found it really difficult. Uh, I really at a tired point by then. And, and sometimes it's just, let's get at the end of the road. Let's get a few hundred meters and, and just keep moving forward. Right. So. We've got an hour and 40 into the run, which is on 12.10k, and it's 0.238 in the AM. Steve's Garmin here is just on 1% battery now from nothing, correlating the time, 2.38. Well, I'm going to cover this on charge now, and then we'll get it fired back up once it's got some power in it. GoPro's on. It's a 12.15k. One hour 41 movement, and it's 0.238. So the run went as expected. Um, and, and if he's honest, he'll tell you that's how the, the run it, it, it will have went. After you, you know, you've been physical for so long, the compound effect that can have. Um, so I, th I felt like that's where I needed to step in, more so in the run, and be part of that kind of ensuring he had all of his fuel, had everything he needed to have, the music playing what he needed, you know, cheering him on. I knew that there was a certain time in the morning it was going to get tough for him, and that's when most people want to bow out and, like, 
it's early hours of the morning, 4 a.m., 3 a.m. And that's when I was like, no, I'm not going, I can't sleep, I need to be there, and I need to be that, you know what I mean, keep him perked up and keep him on track, especially when he was at the end of the whole event. So teamwork is massive. Um, and there is that emotion in there, like you want him to succeed. Um, and you will sleep for me and everything else was like not even a thought because at the end of the day, like we are a team, you need to get through it together and you just do what you need to do. Like everybody else did, it wasn't just me, there was a whole team of people that was part of that to enable it to happen. Crisps. We got any crisps guys? Yeah, we got some uh, Harry Balls. Crisps. Uh, Two minutes. Not even remotely like crisps. <laughs> That's the trick. Get the shit out what did she say? Fuck me. I'm done with him. You're done with him, yeah? Apologies to whoever at Guinness had to listen to the 3 a.m. conversations. <laughs> A <laughs> video for five seconds. <laughs> That's all for the colour I've <laughs> I've got a saying now, I call it the going beyond. And I believe once you've got nothing left at all, and, and it's the point where it's a lot further than what people think it is. And, and once you reach that, you still know where near your limit. And if you continue for another sort of four or five hours after you think you're at your limit, you kind of come out the other side. And that's what I did the first time on the first world record. Because I was in such a hole for so long, I kept expecting this going beyond this, this uh, element of, of, of I'm going to get this, I'm going to come through it again and I'll feel good. And it didn't come. Um, I was literally in pain for, for 12 hours non-stop. It, just, it was just re relentless. Can't shake it off at all. Damn it. So uh, I'm not counting the time here until you're literally getting out. Straight upstairs. Still with about seven hours remaining. It was these early hours that were hurting Stephen. Watch this real time treatment stop and see just how intense things were getting. Yeah. Top off if you want. Jeez. You know what? I'm just thinking that socks and all that. I'm probably not going to do it for five minutes. Can you yep. kneel in it or something just to get half a leg in your feet? Yeah, Yeah, I've got it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, no, not you. He's just having a therapy. Ah. Sorry. Oh, I just want to say that I think it's brutal, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That was tough because what I felt at those points when yeah, Steve was right there doing the ferro gun on him and that one clip minute. there. He's had one minute. One minute. He, his body was getting tight and it was seizing up. I'm alright. Don't need it. Do you want any uh, players cream or out the no. Ah! Right, you don't want to be doing that. Oh, a whole lot of everything just seizing up now. Can I get your leg up on me? Up you get. Is that alright? Do you want me to on your chin again? On, Will? It's a bit weird watching it back because it kind of reminds me of uh, a Formula One car pulling into the pits and uh, all of these people around it and uh, just doing the things that they're doing. 
I, I was in a I was in a bad place at that point. I'd been going for uh, over 24 hours, no sleep. Um, I had an injury that was building up more and more. Um, the, the Theragun was helping, it was helping remove that lactic acid. Um, but I got to a point where the gun, it was helping, but within five minutes, the, the lactic acid was building up. Um, the pins were back. Oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got Team best stand on, Steve? <laughs> Who's got best stand? Killing some grapes. <laughs> 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 you all right? You need to, like, in, what good. time are we on, guys? I knew I'd done something on the, the front of my, my left foot and it was getting worse and worse. And because of that, I was, uh, I was not running. Um, I was not planting my foot properly. And uh, because of that, it started to affect my Achilles heel. <laughs> Easy work, let's go. I'm just grinding to a halt. You alright? You're not. You're not, Steve. You're alright, just because you're gonna pop back you're out. You're doing unreal. Take it easy. Shoot up, get out of the crowd, innit? What would Goggins be saying, lad? That was fucking fun to go off, man. What time are we on, please, guys? Three, three up. Yeah, three, three minutes. Three or nine. You back alright? Yeah, I have. Ah. Uh, okay. uh, uh. <laughs> you want the massage, Joe? Yeah. Three thirty-five. Can you shout I just had call? to keep him focused on what what I needed to focus on. So like, if it was like, oh, this is hurting, that's this is not feeling good. It was kind of like, Steve, you knew this was going to happen. Like, this isn't going to be a walk in the park. So like, stop, stop saying that to me. Like, just come on, switch on. Let's let's get it done. And there was a bit of care inside. Like, I was asking if he was all right. I wasn't just like totally blanking him and finding out where his pain was and things. But um, there was that feeling of, like, okay, I know you're in pain. I know this is hurting. I know that like, this is tough. But <laughs> you knew it was going to be. So come on. <laughs> All right, you ready, guys? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Hold 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 I remember before I'd done the event and I thought once I've only got a marathon to do it's cracked um, that might sound a lot but for me it's like once I've only got a marathon to do I'm all right once I only had a marathon to do I didn't get that feeling because I was in such a pain I just needed it to be over and it was just like trying to move forward Cheers for that. Two hundreds of them. Just one minute, my fucking stomach was bad. Previously, on everything that I've known him do, he's had uh, lower limb issues, specifically calf, Achilles. Um, he's been through a number of different types of, of footwear to try and resolve it, but he, he does struggle down there. In the build-up, he worked quite hard to strengthen that area. However, there was a point, definitely within the last seven mile of the run, where uh, his, his calf slash Achilles um, was at the point where it was going to go. And I remember getting to only eight miles to do and I started to question if my ankle, my Achilles was going to hold out because I, I knew it was close, I, could, I knew it was swelling. Um, the guys had put it in an, an ice bucket. I was very aware of, of what they were doing when they were, they were bandaging it. For his final few laps, Stephen was joined by runners from the Army, Fire Brigade and Police Force. And also, the Guinness Records adjudicator. 
Who is this? Ollie Ollie. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm And there was concerns if I was going to make it at that eight mile point. The guys made the decision at, at that point to um, to strap them up. The, the, the thought that the Achilles was going to snap because the, the ankle was swelling up that much. Uh, so they had to bandage it really, really tight, and it was so painful how uh, they put the bandages on. I said, guys, you've got to loosen this off. I said, I can't physically bear this. They pretty much told me to man up. Um, at worst, you're going to lose a few toenails. We, as a collective, made a conscious decision to not run the rest of the run. It was just get to the end, park ego, park anything else. It's about the outcome. My coach said to me, you're not running anymore. We, we are literally walking the last part out. And I was a bit frustrated with that because you've just done 30 odd hours um, moving at a decent pace. You've now got all of these people here that are supporting you. They want you to achieve this world record. Um, and it's a bit of an anti-climax. You, you're wanting to finish on a, on a high, like run in and, and, and smash it. Uh, and, and it wasn't that, that last six mile. It was literally every single step was just brutal at that point. My whole body was just wanting to shut down. I think if we go to that wall, we can just go straight back. Right, time we get a tune in that one. Watch out behind, guys. SRs anyway, S3. Yeah. Ah. Got it! Fuck it. Got it, it's alright. Got it. Sure. I literally thought if he goes down now, like how does he so close, so close to finishing, how does he recover? It was just uh, pure instinct, so I just grabbed him as fast as I could and tried, basically tried to keep him on his feet. I thought that was it, basically. I thought his calf's gone, his, his, his Achilles is gone, or something like that. And I remember just looking at Ronnie, they sort of shook my head and I was like, that's it, I reckon, like. A few things there was his Achilles was weak. He was a little bit, he was a lot dehydrated, lack of concentration. Normally, you'd, when you're tripping, you've lost your balance, you can be quite responsive. It wasn't there, my legs just, I knew in my head what I needed to do and my body wasn't following. It wasn't until afterwards that I found out it was Ian that was the one that had actually held me up and stopped, stopped me from uh, smashing my face on the floor. Just put one leg forward, Steve. That's it. We've got it. It's right, now let's take, take your way. Keep on. Keep on. Take your way. We turned him round to make sure that he wasn't doing any forward movement under the assistance of somebody else to, to not void the challenge. And I basically said, when you look back at yourself tomorrow, you are either a failure or you've got a world record. So which is it to be? When he takes off again, he takes off comfortably, so there's no signs of snapping his Achilles, there's no signs of injury. That, that last mile and a half, it was just brutal. It just, it just took forever. Um, I, I just quit. Every single step just felt like it was five minutes. But Stephen wasn't lacking in support. Just sending this from uh, the hallway of a, of a business that I've just bought. But just to let you know, this was uh, all down to you, mate. So the reason I'm here is uh, all thanks to you, mate. And um, you're doing something really special. You're inspiring a lot of people. And um, just thank you for being you. Thank you for showing us what can be done. But we'll definitely see you at the finish line in red car, mate. Um, and when I mean definite, I mean you'll definitely be finishing. Fucking crack on, mate, OK? All the best, mate. Love you. Cheers. Remember who you are and why you're doing this. Sending lots of love. Keep going. Wherever you're at at the minute, mate, you know that you've got this. You know you're capable. You've done fucking far, far, far more than anyone else. So keep going. Keep inspiring. You're an absolute awesome lad. And uh, I have a lot of time for you, mate. You know that. You are absolutely awesome. You're amazing. You're such a massive inspiration to me. I actually went out for a run this morning and I haven't done that for fucking ages. Sat on a tube You're doing everyone proud, mate. Your mum will be fucking looking down at you. 
absolutely over the moon with you, so nothing to prove. something about that that was just absolutely brutal um, Guinness are quite tight on their guidelines um, which is expected um, and things like having only the five minute breaks really start to uh, take the toll on you and uh, some of the other rules that they have I just found that extremely hard coming off the 181 mile on the bike um, and then starting that run I've been in a, a hole for 11 and a half hours and I just couldn't come out of it at all. Um, so it's been very difficult. The last sort of five miles, um, I was picking up more and more injuries. Both of my knees were going, my Achilles was going. When I finished the last world record, I dedicated it to my mum and I knew I was gonna do that. And it was a shame that she never got to see that. Um, but that was my way of dedicating that to her. Um, there's, there's two, th there's a number of people that um, have, have had a big impact on my life. Um, but there's two people that also uh, played a big part from, from me growing up and that was my dad and my grandma. So um, I want to dedicate this one to my dad and my grandma because they're still here right now. So I think we tend to dedicate things to people when it's too late. So dad, grandma, that one was for you. I can now confirm that Steve Green, you've been successful. <laughs> you are the second in the record title. And the 364.4 million so proud of him and, and pleased for him and support that was there was just amazing really. Um, I know I know what it, what it meant to him to be doing it and all the effort he put into it so finally to get that it was also relief it was like oh, we've done it he's there like, like at that injury his legs like he's like you know he's not snapped his Achilles we're, we've done it um, but yeah it, it was it was a great experience and for him to have finished and get up on that stage. Really really pleased and a little bit nervous, this is tongue in cheek, because you never know what's coming next with him. So it's like, he's done that, what's coming next? So I've turned my phone off. Good job. I'm gonna say something now. Although I've broke a Guinness World Record, and it's impressive, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from that. I believe we're all capable of impressive results. And the way that I now make my point that we're all capable of more is my old apprentice who, who works with me still now um, was a guy who, um, a young lad, uh, he was overweight. I used to um, have a bit of joke with him about that, of um, about him sorting himself out. And, um, off the back of him seeing what I've done over the last few years, he's been pushing himself physically. So my aim now is to help him break my world record to prove the point that we are all capable of a lot more than what we think we are. Until next time, thank you, Steve. Yeah, I've just literally just finished my own big fitness challenge 
this year, which was a 1,000 mile triathlon from the top of Great Britain to the bottom. Um, I am starting to think about a couple of different things for next year, but am I going to try and beat Steve's record? Not at the minute, but you never know. Maybe at some point in the future. That's all I'm saying. Thank you.